Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we're going over the 10 most game-changing rules from 2nd edition to 3rd edition for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Number 1. The Hero Phase and Command Points. Command points are now generated both on your turn and on your opponent's turn. Um, not only do you generate one command point per turn, uh, but there are also multiple ways of generating them throughout the turn, um, which is very useful because you are going to need to use them for more things this time around, except they now expire at the end of the battle round. So don't hold on to them, use them as you would anything else that is going to expire at the end of the battle round. I'm going to be doing a video all about that, um, so check that out in the description below once it is created. Number two, heroic actions. A new thing that you can do in the hero phase, both yours and your opponents, is choose one of four different heroic actions. Um, these do not cost anything, you just get to do them. The first one is heroic leadership. Pick one friendly hero and roll a dice. Add two if your general has been slain. On a four plus, you receive one extra command point to use all those lovely command abilities that you now have. Bear in mind, you can only use that extra command point for the hero that you chose during that round. Heroic willpower. Pick one friendly hero that is not a wizard. If it is the enemy's hero phase, you can unbind one of their spells as if you were a wizard. If it is your hero phase, then you can choose to dispel one of the endless spells that might be about. This still counts towards only being able to dispel or unbind one spell um, in the same phase. The third one is their finest hour. Pick one friendly hero. Add one to their wounds rolls for attacks they make during that turn and add one to the saving throws for attacks made against that hero. So plus one to wound rolls, plus one to saving throws. You cannot use this heroic action on the same hero in the same battle. So just once per hero. And finally, we have heroic recovery. You pick one friendly hero and make a heroic recovery roll of 2d6. If the roll is less than the hero's bravery characteristic, then you gain d3 wounds back. If the roll was equal to that hero's bravery characteristic, you can heal one allocated wound to that hero. Remember that you can use one of these heroic actions both on your hero phase and the opponents, so make certain you do so. Number three, rally. Yes, I am going to be doing a video all on command points and command abilities, but this one is so important that it had to be mentioned. You can use this command ability at the start of the hero phase. The unit that receives the command must be more than three inches away from any enemies. Roll one dice for each slain model in that unit. Every six gains you back that slain model. So that's pretty powerful. Uh, armies that don't necessarily have the ability to gain back slain models now do, and those that do are now even more so. Uh, since the unit has to be more than three inches away from any enemies, you can't save them mid-combat, but that is still going to be used all over the place. Oh, and mind you, you still cannot use the same command ability more than once in the same phase, so there's no spam in the rally. Nah. Alright. Number four, redeploy. Another command ability, but it's cool, it's new, and I thought it should be mentioned. It says you can use this command ability in the enemy movement phase after an enemy unit finishes a normal move, a run, or a retreat. The unit that receives the command, which is just the unit that the hero points at, uh, must be within 9 inches of that enemy unit and more than 3 inches from all enemy units. You can make a d6 move with the unit, but it must finish the move more than 3 inches away from enemy units. And it cannot shoot later in the same turn. Uh, unless you get one or two, that could really 
screw up the opponent's strategies if they suddenly are too far away to make that charge that they were uh, gearing for, or at least allows you to get into a better position um, for the coming attack. However, you may not want to use that, and instead you may want to use this Next command ability, number five, Unleash Hell. For anyone who has played Warhammer 40,000, you're familiar with Overwatch. This is their version of Overwatch, but probably better. Yeah, better. Unleash Hell. You can use this command ability after an enemy unit finishes a charge move. The unit that receives the command must be within nine inches of that enemy unit and more than three inches from all other enemy units. The unit that receives the command can shoot in that phase, but when it does so, you must subtract one from hit rolls for, for its attacks, and it can only target the unit that made the charge move. Just the threat of you using this ability is going to have people second guessing whether they want to run in at your, at your ranged units, because that is really nasty. So maybe you want to save at least one command point for that. Number six, garrisons. You can now garrison your unit in what is called a defensible terrain piece, granting the units inside a plus one to their save rolls and the enemies targeting them a minus one to hit. Now, monsters can now go on a rampage and destroy those defensible terrain pieces with you inside, which may cause a loss of models. You have to roll for everyone inside and a roll of one loses a model, but still it might be the way to go for your more squishy ranged units. Number seven, contesting objectives. Monsters can now count as five models, which is fantastic. It makes sense. I mean, they're big, nasty guys. Why wouldn't they be able to uh, secure an objective all by themselves? But not only monsters, heroes that are not monsters that are five wounds or more can count as two models. So I like this. It makes sense. It makes sense that my big tree lord or my big chimera or one of my bloodthirsters can help secure an objective. I like it. I like it. Number eight, Miscast and Divine Wrath. We have added fumbles to Age of Sigmar. I love it. You're probably not going to love it, but I love it. <laughs> Flavor. Okay, so Withers can cast spells like Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shields, both of which have changed a little bit. For example, if you're within three inches of that wizard when he casts Arcane Bolt, you're going to take D3 damage. That's kind of cool. And Mystic Shield is like, um, casting of five instead of six. But anyway, if you roll double ones, snake eyes, when you're trying to cast a spell, you take d3 damage and you can't cast any more spells that turn. I love it. Fumble, yeah. Anyway, also priests, if you roll a one when you are trying to chant your prayer, you take one mortal wound. Uh, since that's more likely than two double ones, I would imagine you might need to use your new heroic recovery, heroic action to heal your priests if you're particularly unlucky. But then that's what the fumble is all about, isn't it? I just like it. Number nine, monstrous rampage. As I mentioned, monsters are going to town. They're going crazy. They now have something called monstrous rampage. Each player can carry out one monstrous rampage at the end of the charge phase with each friendly monster that they have. The monstrous rampages are as follows. Roar. Hmm. Pick one enemy unit within three inches of this model and roll a dice. On a three plus, that unit cannot issue or receive commands in the following combat phase. They're too loud. They can't hear because he roared. I like it. Stomp. Pick one enemy unit within three inches of this model that is not a monster and roll a dice. On a two plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. He stabbed him. I like it. Titanic duel. Pick one enemy monster within three inches of this model. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by this model that target that enemy monster until the following combat phase. Yeah, they duel. It's awesome. And lastly, Smash to rubble. Pick one faction terrain or defensible terrain feature within three inches of this model and roll a dice. 
on A3+, the terrain feature is demolished. It's no longer defensible, or you can no longer use its war scroll because it's now rubble. I mean, it doesn't look any different technically, but it's no longer defensible and it's rubble. Uh, your monsters are now acting like they should, like monsters. I enjoy this chaotic side effect. You're not going to know what happened because not only are you choosing all of this for your monsters, but so is your opponent. So craziness. Number 10, core detachments. The last really important rule that I'm going to mention today. When you are building your army, there are a lot of war scroll battalions available to you. To have access to them, you have to have the units that they want you to have, and you have to pay the points cost to put that into your army. Core battalions are similar, except there is no points cost. You do have to have the units that they request, and they give your army, a, the units in the battalion, a special bonus. Or they give you a special bonus, depending on what it is. There are six different ones to choose from, currently, and they grant one or more special abilities to you or uh, to the units involved. One of them, actually, is uh, to regain a command point. So, again, plenty of ways to gain command points so that you can use them for those all-important command abilities, which I'll be discussing more in the video I have mentioned. You can see which ability the battalion grants you by looking at the icon associated with that battalion. Only battalions with the unified icon, which is currently one, can use the one drop deployment that used to be available to all the battalions. Now only one type of battalion can do that. And if you are unfamiliar with what that is, the one drop deployment is you can set up everyone in the battalion during deployment all at the same time instead of just one unit. Therefore, War Scroll, War Scroll Battalions no longer offer that ability. As well, Battalions with the Magnificent icon grant you an additional enhancement during army construction. Enhancements are the command traits, the artifacts of power, the spells, the prayers, and triumphs that are now available to all games, it seems, uh, during army construction. So again, War Scroll Battalions don't offer an extra artifact. Battalions with the Slayer icon allow you to, once per battle, use either the All Out Attack Command ability, which grants plus one to hit rolls, or the Unleash Hell Command ability, which if you recall is shooting at your opponent during when they charge, uh, without spending a command point to do it, or requiring a hero to issue a command. If you recall, the hero has to be within a certain range of the unit that will receive the command. That is not the case when it's free at this time. Battalions with the Strategist icon allow an extra command point at the start of your hero phase. That's only once per battle, though. And lastly, the battalions that have the Swift icon allow you to either use the At the Double Command ability, which allows your run to just be 6 instead of d6, or the Forward to Victory Command ability, which allows you to reroll a charge roll once per battle at no cost. And though I said top 10 most important rules, I'm also just going to sneak in that hordes, you know, where you take 30 to 40 models in one unit, that's probably not going to happen as much anymore because they have set restrictions on how big your units can get. So you may be, you can still do hordes, but they're more likely going to be groups of 10 units instead of one group of 30 or 40 models. Um, it depends. You'll have to check that out. That is everything I'm going to say today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful to you. If there is something that you're excited about, let me know in the comments below if there was a major rule that I somehow missed and you think people should be aware of it as soon as possible. Let me know in the comments below. I received all this information by looking at the rule book that Games Workshop gave me in the Dominion box set. I'm going to be doing more on Dominion itself for example, how much its value actually is, and more in videos to come. I hope you had fun. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you, patrons. You are very much appreciated.